So you know, I really do enjoy using Luminar Neo for my photo editing, either my drone photos or dedicated cameras like this. It is super easy to use and you can get fantastic results. But loads of you have been asking me, when is Luminar Neo going to come to the iPad? I've also been asking that question as well. What about if you don't have a laptop or a desktop or you simply just want to have a more relaxed editing style? editing on an actual iPad. Well, it's really great to see that Luminar have actually finally released their own dedicated iPad app. And that's gonna be showing you today and also testing out some of these features and showing you exactly how it works. And then we can come to the conclusion together, is this any good? Let's find out. So I actually really do enjoy editing photos on my iPad using the Apple Pencil. I just found the whole experience a lot more relaxing. Rather than sat at a desk editing on my computer or a laptop, you can be sat at a sofa, lying down, just chilling, editing these photos in your own time. So it's great to see that we now have Luminar on here. So all you need to do to get this is go to the actual App Store, search for Luminar. It's called Luminar for iPad Photo Editor. And that's exactly what I'm going to be showing you today, some of these features. Let's get straight into it. So if we open this up here, this is gonna show you your camera roll. So if you've got a drone, for instance, you can actually import your photos directly onto your iPad, and then you can then edit any photo you want from your camera roll here. So I'm gonna be showing you some different techniques from different examples that I've got here. So I really do like the whole UI of this, first of all. I think everything is laid out really easy to actually get started, especially for beginners. So on the right hand side, this is where you've got your develop tab, your enhanced AI, structure AI, relight AI, and all you need to do is actually click on one of these. And all of the actual UI here, I think it's just really cleverly laid out. I've never seen anything like this before. So it's really intuitive but it looks fantastic as well. So on the top here, the first one, you've got your temperature slider and everything just looks really nice on this whole setup here. It's not like traditional, just standard bars where you're just gonna be swiping left or right. Here you can see the UI just looks great. So for this, I'm just gonna actually decrease that temperature a little bit. So underneath here, this is where you're gonna have your tint. I'm gonna keep that the same. So these circles here, these are gonna be highlight shadows, your whites and your blacks. So for this photo, we can actually just turn this and that is going to, as you can see on here, it's gonna be changing the highlights. So if we turn it to the right, it's going to increase the highlights. And if we turn it to the left, it's going to decrease them. So we're gonna decrease the highlights a little bit. And then what we're gonna do is we're going to raise the shadows a little bit just by turning that to the right hand side. Now your exposure is in the middle here. So we can actually increase that. And that's going to change the exposure of the photo. So if your photo is too dark, then you want to increase that. If it's too bright, you want to decrease it a little bit. So for that, I'm just gonna decrease it slightly here. So the whites, I'm gonna turn down a little bit as well. So for that, we're just gonna pull down and then the blacks, we're gonna just slightly increase those blacks. So you see this little squiggle here, looks a bit like a heartbeat, doesn't it? That's your contrast. <laughs> so everything just looks different yet yeah, cool doesn't it and you can see as i actually move that to the left and decrease that contrast you can see there it's it's almost flat lined <laughs> and then if i turn that to the right you can now see really large squiggles there so it's really cool how it's done this and it's different for sure so for the contrast i'm just going to add a slight bit of contrast because you'll get to that in a second this box here this is going to control the vignette so if you want to add a vignette you can just turn that to the left or to the right if you want to have certain vignettes. I like to add them if I'm going to at the end. So for that, I'm just gonna keep that back to zero. Now you see this box here, this is where you're going to increase your saturation and also vibrance. So if I was to move this up, that's actually increasing the vibrance on the photo. And if I was to turn it to the right, that's gonna increase just the saturation. So the more I move this in different ways, that's going to either increase or decrease that saturation. Now on the photo, all you need to do is actually just hold down and you can see the before and the after. So straight away, that's looking a bit better already. So Enhanced AI, you know I absolutely love using this on the desktop application. This uses artificial intelligence to analyze that photo and it will only enhance the areas it feels it needs to. So all you need to do is actually just move this slider up. And as I move that up, just look at the dramatic effect it's done to that photo. Now I say that's too sharp, too much contrast, but if I bring that down and have that round about 40%, just look at the before again and the after, 
and you've got Structure AI, which comes directly from the desktop application. So what this does is this is going to add clarity and contrast to that photo again. So if we just increase that, you can see now just what it's doing. So it's sharpening that image. Now you don't want to add a lot of this because it is a really powerful tool. Right, if we have that to say 13%, we can see on the photo the actual sharpness and contrast that has been added. So for that photo there, I want the mountain in the background to be the focus point. So we've got Relight AI as well, again, directly from the desktop application. So if I move this here, you can see it opens up. It's like got barn doors on the light. It is so cool, the thought of everything. So what this is doing, doing now is, this is going to brighten up the far part of the image. So it's putting light just onto that mountain area. And now this one here, this is going to brightness near. So if I was to decrease that, that's going to make this part of the image darker. So the actual attention that you're going to look at is this mountain range in the background, which is exactly what I want. So for that photo, for me, that is completely finished now. So I can actually just click on this button here and click share, and I can either now share that directly to somebody else. I could airdrop it to my computer and finish off editing there, or I could save it to my camera roll. If I wanted to, to share it to Instagram as well, all I need to do is actually click on this marker here. This is the crop tool. So you've got loads of different options of how you can crop your image, all done automatically for you. And I think it makes it really easy here, especially for beginners again, for cropping. Now, if you want to actually change the angle of it, all you need to do is actually just push up or down on here. But let's say I want to actually share this on Instagram. So I want it now to be for Instagram stories. So all I need to do is click on this button here, click on Instagram stories, and it will automatically crop it for me. I click done, and that is now cropped, ready to share to Instagram. So let's just show you an example now how we can get some results really fast. So if we click on this photo here, this was taken on the DJI Mini 4 Pro. So it's a good photo, it's composed well, but it just looks a little bit bland. It needs to stand out a bit more. So what we can do on here is if we go to Enhance AI, I'm just going to increase that to, let's say, 60%. We're going to go to Structure AI, and we're going to increase that as well. Now, automatically, that looks so much better just using two sliders. So if we just click on here, that's the original where it was a good photo, but it didn't pop as much. So now everything just stands out a lot more. So we've got more contrast and actual structure on the mountain range. It also automatically decreases some of those shadows. So two sliders could take about 30 seconds and that is now ready to share. Now this also works really well for photos. So let's just say we've got a portrait photo here. So a good photo, but again, we want it to just pop a little bit more. So what we can do again is we can go on the either develop or we can just let the automatic AI do everything for you. So again, it all depends on how much time you've got, but if you're just relaxed on the sofa, you probably have quite a lot of time. But if we just go to enhance AI, and all we need to do is increase that now, and you can see what it's doing to this photo. Again, it's just brightening up the areas which it automatically thinks needs enhancing. Go to Structure AI, we're gonna increase that as well. And you can see the difference there, just from two sliders again. We click on the before, so it's quite dark around here, nothing's really popping, standing out. And now it's a lot more detail there. But what I do like with portraits is, if we go to that relight, we want some light on the subject. We want the brightness to be a bit darker behind that subject. So directly behind her here. So if we actually decrease that now to let's say minus 25, and then we'll go to brightness near. So this is gonna be the actual subject. We want her to stand out more. So if we increase that, it's putting light automatically on that subject. So again, what's that? Three sliders. If we look at the before and look at the after, just look at the dramatic difference there from three sliders. Now, if we wanted to, we can go into the develop tab and we can actually change some more. We can change the highlights if we wanted to. We could actually decrease the shadows a little bit. We could add even a little bit more contrast if we wanted to. We don't have to do that step. What's great about Luminar is that the AI is that good, especially for beginners. It's allowing you to get great results in two or three 
of these sliders here. We've got a Velcro here, but nothing really stands out great about it. So what I want to show you now is that this sky just looks a bit boring. On the left hand side here, we've got some icons here we can also use. Now one of those is the sky replacement tool, a fantastic feature from the desktop version. And we now have it on the iPad as well. So with this sky here, we can actually have a choice. We've got blue skies, stormy skies, lighting, and it will automatically change that sky for you. So we could click on sunset here. So you can have a play around with these and actually see which one of these skies you want to use. Now, some of them are a bit over the top. I would say like if you use that, are people gonna believe you? But some of them do look really good. So I do like the sunrise and sunset skies myself. Now, if you want to as well, you can move the position of that sky by actually moving this around. But most of the time, the actual software does perfectly for you. But you've also got fine detail. So if there's any gaps, you can close the gaps using the here. You've got fixed details. You have a few different sliders there. So you can tweak that sky if you wanted to. Now on the photo, you can also pinch to zoom in and you can look at any part of that photo. So it's super responsive, which is really good. There's no lag on this app. Now, if you wanted to, you've also got monochrome. So if you look at that and go, actually, that might look pretty good as a black and white. You can move this up and you can get a full black and white photo. I think that actually looks really good as a black and white photo. I can now click share and click share to my Instagram, share to like airdrop, somebody else, or save it to my photos. And this also works really good for product photography as well. So if you wanted to just make this stand out a little bit more, but make it pop, want some contrast, structure, clarity, all you need to do is just increase that enhance AI, increase that structure, let's say it's around about 40%. Now, also on the left-hand side, you've got here some different filters, like presets for your photo to choose from. But it's, they're all done these like these really cool classic film rolls for you to choose. You can increase the strength of that or decrease it. We can go through each one of these and see which one we like. I think that one's going to be a winner. But I can go through and choose any of these I wanted to. This is automatically going to be doing that color grading for you, just baked in. And I really like the UI of here. Everything stands out. Actually, I really do like Grace. I'm going to add a little bit more. Let's say 65% that looks absolutely brilliant so again the before and the after from what a couple of minutes so to finish here we've got dji mini 4 pro nighttime shot compose well all we need to do is increase the enhance ai and you can see what it's doing to that photo it's adding saturation it's adding some contrast it's also brightening up that image automatically for you but it's just brightening up this part, the landscape. It's not brightening up the, the actual sky and the sea because it knows that this is the focus point. It's fantastic how it's automatically done for you. Again, perfect for beginners. You don't have to have this big learning curve. Structure AI, let's increase some of that. Now, relight AI, what we can do here, we can also light a little bit more of this image just by increasing these here. Everything pops a little bit more. Let's look at that before and the after now if we wanted to we can also subtly add a little bit more sharpening and then if we go under develop and then we can here add some saturation as well that's a really nice photo and it only took me about two to three minutes to edit that from what it looked like straight out of the drone to what it can do with this automatically. Again, click share, save that, put it on Instagram and that is a fantastic photo, something straight out of GTA. So overall, really impressed with the Luminar iPad app. I think for beginners, this is gonna be perfect because the UI is really straightforward to use. It's not very daunting. You don't have to learn about different maskings and color grading, color correcting techniques. It's all done via sliders and a lot of it is done via AI. So all you need to do is actually increase the sliders to get these results done for you. I would say this is not going to be a replacement to Lightroom. Lightroom is a bit more of a professional tool. It gives you a lot more options, but you really need to know how to use Lightroom and have a good understanding about color grading, color correcting and photo manipulation. Whereas here, this is perfect for beginners to get fast results that also look really good. Now this has just been released and it's great to see that we do have a lot of the features from the desktop version on the iPad. And it'd be great to see even more of the desktop features brought over to this. But overall, I think it's really good. So if you want to go and check this out, you can get a free seven day trial using my link at the top of the description. 
So go and actually have a mess around with your photos, edit them, see what you think. And if you wanted to, you can then continue this app. It's $4.99 a month or it's $29.99 for the whole year. You get everything that I've shown you today, all of these features all baked in. So I really do highly recommend this. I love the desktop version and it's really great to see that we now have an iPad version as well. So a lot more relaxing when you want to actually edit your photos away from the computer. You can now do it on the iPad in your own spare time. So I hope you enjoyed that video. If you did, just hit that like button, subscribe if you're new around here, and I'll see you guys on the next one. Bye-bye.